Ladies and gentlemen, and again, thank you for being with us. I've got a very, very, very special pleasure going on here, and I'm going to just brag and show off for a couple of minutes and talk about that. But remember, this is an open line day, and so, of course, you can chat with somebody anytime. 326 GEMS. That's 326 4367 4368 4369. I'd love to hear from you. But I have just walked into our studio. You know, we get these special surprise guests, and it's always a pleasure to have them. I've got in here, ladies and gentlemen, three people visiting us from the United States, and one of them, I know you remember this voice, you remember this lady, you remember the discussions and all that. I've got Bev Smith with us, national talk show host, and some of you might remember her from WGBS, right? Yeah. In Miami, in Miami. Florida. Welcome, Miss Smith, and thank you so much. Welcome to Leading Voices. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. I, I, and it's really funny because when I come to the Bahamas, I don't think that I'm visiting a foreign country. I'm just coming home, you know. Well, welcome home. Welcome Thank back. You. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to have Thank you. you. And Miss Smith is accompanied by two other fine looking gentlemen. I might never leave this studio. <laughs> I'm going to stay here forever. Please, gentlemen, introduce yourself to me. And to our, to our Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Brooke Titus. I'm the executive producer for The Bev Smith Show. Mm -hmm. And. Hi, my name is uh, David Anderson. I'm the uh, the founder of an uh, uh, establishment called the Empowerment Radio Network. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. E E E R N. E R N. That's right. Empowerment I, Radio I, Network. I, I, uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Right, now tell us. First of all, you know, I have to get into your business. What are you people doing in the Bahamas? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right to the point. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you was in politics and not in immigration. <laughs> We are coming here for several reasons. One, we could use the break. Yes, I'm sure. And when I left my hometown of Pittsburgh yesterday, it was, what was it, 19, 19 degrees, degrees? And snow was falling. Yeah. You, mean, you need to be here, honey, and I feel it. And yeah. I love it. And that's one reason. The second reason is because we want to reestablish relationships. Mm -hmm. And I'm for hooking up. Debbie and I tried to do this before. Okay. I want to hook up, and in particular with African women mm -hmm. around the country. In August, I'm having a convention. I'm asking a 1,000 women from around the world mm -hmm. to come to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and draft a position paper on the state of black women. Okay. Emphasis on America, but we're hooking up. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to present it to the Congressional Black Caucus when they have their Congressional yeah. Black Caucus. And the third reason I'm here is because in 1999, I came here to help make the story of Clifton. I came here to tell the story. And so a young man, Attorney Code Smith, mm -hmm. you probably, you, you know Code Smith. I know Code Smith. Okay. I used to teach that Oh. I started teaching young. Oh, you, you, really? Yeah. Well, he wanted me, he told someone that he wanted me to take a look at that area and, yeah. and made me acquainted with what was happening. And I met a young man named Vivian Wiley. Mm -hmm. And Vivian came on the show and showed me his ancestors that were on that land. And when I went to that place and walked through, and was able to touch, this is the experience I have, mm -hmm. the bricks that are still there from the original slave. How do I end up, that's not my ancestors there. Because yeah. we're all the same link. We're all the same link. So I'm going to go when we leave here. I'm going to go back out there and look. Mm -hmm. And if I think that um, they haven't treated my Bahamian people right where that's concerned, because I understand that the people who made the movie Jaws still haven't cleaned up that part mm. where they were. And I'm going to bring a delegation back here from the United States mm -hmm. to see how we can hook up. I've called a few friends, yeah. Congress people, civil rights leaders like Dorothy Tillman, who got reparations in Chicago. And I'd like to bring them here to see, but I will determine that and let Debbie know once I, once I get there, mm -hmm. let Debbie Bartlett know. Because it is time for African people to hook up wherever they are. So why not start? In the Bahamas, mm -hmm. which is my second home. Okay. 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 All right. Is that, is that all right, Professor? Yeah, that, that's all Thank right. Thank you very you, much. You can stay. <laughs> <laughs> That, 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 that sounds very, very interesting. You know, just a couple minutes before I started the show, in fact, there was an advert on the radio 
from code yes. asking people to reconnect yes. and all that. So it's going to be Well, it's very too. important because when I was here, this was a Bahamian issue. Mm. And yeah. it, the people that started this and worked on the campaign, these people, like Erlen, these people worked hard. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a man, Lewis Bacon, very wealthy, wealthy, money talks, and everything's supposed to walk. But this time, we're not going to walk. Yeah, so I mean, going out if like you that. threaten mm -hmm. the Bahamian people, if you don't treat the Bahamian people right, you're not treating black people right. That's right. So this is a bigger issue than okay. just that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we think it's so important to go out and take a look. Okay, all right. That that, that sounds like it's going to be something exciting. Yeah, it sounds like some exciting times coming, Absolutely. coming coming down the line and Clifton once again in the center of of, of some of that discussion. Yeah. I, I feel I feel very, very, very close to Clifton actually. I've mm. always thought of this is sacred space. Hello. And, and can I can I take a moment to tell you what happened to me? Yeah. You don't mind, David? Oh, it's your okay. show. I decided that I wanted to see everything. Mm -hmm. So I had interviewed Vivian Wiley, so impressed with the way he went back mm -hmm. and found out long before Skip the Professor did the thing about DNA and everything in the United States. Mm. He, he did it. They did it here. And so I had him on my show, the nationally syndicated show, broadcasting out of Washington. And I wanted to see it. So they took me everywhere, and they said, we want to show you the way the slaves escaped. When the pirates were bringing the slaves in, they took them to a, ca a, a, ca or a, a cave. And so the slaves jumped ship. They always like to think or tell you that we're docile. Mm -hmm. But they jumped ship, and they went into the See, look, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> they went into this cave, and with their hands, fills me up. They dug their way to freedom. Now here we are now. We can read. It's no longer legislated against. Mm -hmm. We're not We're not free because we haven't captured our own selves. Right. We've been captured ourselves. But when I went through that cave and they dug the steps. I mean you have to, you just have to see it. But you can't really appreciate it until you look into the cave because the digging is in the shape of the continent of Africa. Mm. It's your turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, tell me, tell me, tell me. Continue. Miss Bev is deep. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, it's it's what it is. I mean, it's it's almost why we are here. Mm -hmm. You know, and the same challenge that that's going on here in Clifton is happening in the United States. It's Every, the same thing. Okay. You know, the hedge fund white man with the money is just bulldozing our, our land, and they did this in New York City. Mm -hmm. They built. Wall Street on top of it's sacred everything. land, and they have the nerve to trade puts, calls, and stock options on a daily basis in New York City on the backs of our, our ancestors. So this type of behavior is no room for it, and we have to um, get to a space as Black people where we use this power, this, this microphone, for for those sole purposes. Period. It, it's no longer uh, fun and games. Yeah. It's no longer time for Little Wayne and our pants hanging off our behinds. It's, it's time for us to really get serious about what it is that we're supposed to be doing at this time. Mm -hmm. They got a black president, man. Yeah. They got this lady in uh, uh, YouTube call herself Sweet Brown. She said, ain't nobody got time for that. Y'all seen that? <laughs> they say, ain't nobody got time for that. It's no time for that. It's no time for foolishness. Yeah. So we have to just get serious about it, and we have to respond to issues when we get these phone calls. We have to respond in this way. To be able to assist with the um, with the perpetuation of the awareness, mm -hmm. we have to wake up. Yeah. We're sleeping. Mm -hmm. we... So where does ERN fit into it? Well, <laughs> wow. ERN on uh, Parliament Radio Network, we we're in the business of syndicating programs like the Bev Smith Show. She is our uh, main state program. Uh, we've been able, and just uh, I think um, the previous syndicator uh, discontinued the air date uh, October of 2011. And now it's 2013, and we um, are launching Miss Miss Bev's already on the air in 15 stations on a weekend basis in the, in the U.S. But we are putting her on 22 stations on a weekly ba on a nightly basis, excuse me, from 7 to 10 on terrestrial radio in the U.S. So this is our business. This is what we um, have signed up for. This is what we do for real. We wake up and we um, we put out programs that mean something. Uh, we produce another program called Black Economics which is a black empowerment, um, entrepreneurial 
talk show, it's a weekend program, it's a three hour. And we only talk about business. We only talk about finance. We talk about SBA 7A loan programs, how to self-finance, how to um, deal with debt, how to raise equity, you know. Uh, we funded ERN on our, on our own. You know, I, I yeah. don't owe anybody. I haven't taken out a loan. You know, we've got assets on the market right now that we're liquidating to finance this venture. That's how serious we are about this. Uh -huh. So, um, I mean, we're serious. We, we take things very seriously, and we feel that, you know, it's time. There's no space in America right now. Uh, for foolishness, mm -hmm. and that, that's our business. Mm -hmm. We're in the business of putting programs on the radio uh, that are for the benefit of black people. Okay. We're not racist, but we're pro Negro. <laughs> <laughs> Negro, 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 came out of Africa. Mm -hmm. And so now I say, oh, I always did. <laughs> and it's really interesting when you fill out for the census and you put, they say, who are you? And you put Africa in, in America. <laughs> it confuses them and I like that. Yeah. So that's the other side. That's, the, that's my passion side. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were able to convince me after a long time. But he's being very modest. We started with three stations. And we'll be at 24 stations, and he said just right. on the weekend, and we are on the week somewhere in America every, every day. day. Mm -hmm. And thank God, they're the ones asking for us to be on. We need her longer, which is a testament to our truth. The one thing that I found by partnering with David is that no one is telling me what to say. Okay. I mean, yeah. they could tell me all they want to. It didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, love somebody. Yeah. You know, because the truth deserves to be heard, and everyone deserves to hear it. Okay. And that's that's what I like about the empowerment radio. And we can combine our desire for us to hook up around the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing things. We're going to start a series called Africa to African Americans. I've been doing it for a long time, where I get the embassy people to come on the show yeah. to talk about their country the, and they, mm -hmm. the ambassadors and they had never done that before mm. no one had ever offered them anything but two minutes on MSNBC or yeah. CNN mm -hmm. or one of those and usually when there's a crisis hello right. yeah. somebody yeah. hello yeah. so what we did was we just put them on and let them talk and then I said I'll never forget my first ambassador was from Jamaica and I said uh, would you mind staying a little longer to take some calls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he said you want me to stay? <laughs> and I said, yes, I want you to stay. Same thing happened with Nigeria. You want me to stay? Because what we see in the American press mm -hmm. is yeah. not the story. Yeah. It's not the story. In yeah. fact, what you see in the press in general, because I'm not exactly sure that we in the diaspora treat Africa fairly. Mm. And, and that's Africa, wherever Africa is. I don't think we, we also treat Africa objectively, mm. as objectively as we should in the press generally. I think, I think you'll find that is the case straight around the world. And, and, and I agree with you, the information needs to get out. The, 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 the perspective from the country people needs to get out there. And it, and it helps to shape public opinions. I think that's a worthy work we're engaged in. Well, that is why I asked Code to come on mm -hmm. last week oh, yeah. to talk about what's going on. Because yeah. you see, if I don't know about you and mm -hmm. you don't know about me, then I believe what they tell you. Absolutely. And we believe what they tell us, hello Willie Lynch, mm -hmm. about each other. Yeah. And so my desire was to have Code come on and tell it. Because when I, I I saw the tape and saw this man was taking kind of credit for doing what Bahamian people did. This was their fight. Yeah. And not a little mention about the people who were really on the ground yeah. struggling. Which is the way the plantation owner always does. Mm -hmm. But I called him. I want to make this perfectly clear. I called Lewis Bacon's people, yeah. and I said, come on my show. I will give you the same amount of time that I gave Attorney Smith, yeah. and, and if you're not lying about your involvement, because we need as many voices as we can get, if you're not trying to be a magician, now you see it, now you yeah. don't. What's under the table? What's the real trick? Mm. Did they come? Three, two, one. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, and they said, 
sent emails, right, Brooke? Yeah. They, they Absol- called on the phone. Absolutely. They just did everything but show up. Mm. Well, they didn't even send it. I told them to send a statement yeah. because that's usually what is done. Mm-hmm. And as a former paralegal, I mean, I really understand how you need to be objective yeah. with that. Nothing. Nothing. So we're on to something here. Yeah. But what the Bahamian people have to do is not allow anyone else to take their thunder. Mm-hmm. This is their land. This is your mm-hmm. land. This is your soil. This is where people are buried. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Rambo <laughs> Dean, a mate and wonderful memory. Yes, I have grand, grand memory. But I also was a friend to Senator Pat Coakley. Okay, yes. And okay. I love Gwen Kelly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Gwen Kelly with her energy, you yeah. know. So I'm connected. Mm-hmm. I'm connected. But Granville, yeah, Granville, he was a, he was grand. <laughs> yes, he was. He was oh, grand. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And 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 so you 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 move now from cause to cause to cause, but they never really go away. No. They, they, they don't no. really disappear. On now we just had one yesterday continues. with David trying to get here mm-hmm. from Atlanta. Yeah. Oh well, that that was a different type of issue. That was a. See, in, in the U.S., the, we run into this, what they call hating, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so um, I'm on the, at the airport trying to get through or whatever, and this white family was in, in front of me. They were from mm-hmm. France, New York. And whatever their issue was, they had some passport issues, some ticketing issues. They had a lot of yeah. multiple issues going on. The black women behind the counter were patient, no problem, we'll get it done. My black behind comes up to the counter. Where are you going? Nassau. It's the middle of the day. Why are you going to Nassau? You know, I just get a hard time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I normally, I always have a suit when I travel. Yeah. You know, ever since Obama's become yeah. president, it's made it a little bit easier for the light-skinned black man. So I always wear a suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it wasn't always easy. It's the light-skinned black man, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, you need, you, need, you need to see him. He is two degrees below what we would call high. High yellow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So normally, I have the suit on, right? But yeah, well, on yeah, this yeah. particular day, yeah. I had some, you know, some jeans yeah. and a sport coat whatever, and I had a, you know, a, a New York Yankee cap cocked to the side. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she's like, well, what time your plane's at 3.05? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, listen, I need to make this plane, yeah. you know, the Bahamian government is sending for us. Yeah. We need to move this along as quickly as possible. I wasn't being, you know, yeah. nasty, but I was trying to communicate that this is what we're doing. This Long and short, she made an issue of my passport, that the, the passport had a, like a, a tear in it. And because I had a tear in it, it was deficient. And because it was deficient, I had to go to the deficient passport office. And because I had to go to the deficient passport office, I had to get a new passport um, expedited. You know, it's something that would yeah. take like two weeks to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, look, that's not going to happen. We're going to get on this plane, mm-hmm. you know. And big fiasco. Went to another counter, same situation. And the lady even put notes inside the computer okay. to tell yeah. the other yeah. person. So yeah, don't, I, don't talk to him. Right. Yeah. So I'm but a it wasn't a passport, it was a passport. Cover. The cover. It wasn't the passport. Mm-hmm. It's the cover of the passport. Okay. And the yeah. rule says that as long as your face is clear, mm-hmm. your passport scans, yeah. and your name is legible, mm-hmm. and everything and is you're cool, good to go. Yeah. on the list, yeah. you're good to go, right? So I'm an entrepreneur. I'm problem solver. I deal with these problems every day. But now I'm in a challenge, and I don't want to be late because we got important people yeah. standing there holding the sign waiting for us. So I said, you know what? I got to go to somebody else until I get on the plane. I went to seven different women. Mm-hmm. Black women. Black women now. We need help. Until one said, why are you, you're yeah. playing 305, it's 245, what's yeah. the problem? Yeah. I said, well, this is what I've been going through. So once she listened to the story, mm-hmm. she typed me in, blah, 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 have a nice day, boom, cool. boom, boom. Yeah. I say all that to say that we, our challenge in the United States is this issue of like com- even communicating what the, what the challenge is. Mm-hmm. Because the other side is getting it and they're, they're taking it you know, in a different way. They want to cause problems, there's interference. No clear lines of communication. So to come to this island and to interact with all of these, you know, different people and the different women and everybody's pleasant, it's just a testament to what, you know, they say the happiest place on the earth are, is in the Caribbean mm-hmm. because the weather is always cool and, and, and it has to do with the way people act and how they treat you. Mm-hmm. In the States, it's a whole nother ball. And yeah. he doesn't mean cool as in cold. I know, yeah. He means cool, cool, cool. Cool. Yeah, that's what he means. So, yeah, we 
have some challenges, yeah. man, especially with what, you, what you're yeah. talking about with, with women and, yeah. and especially in the States, man. There's a lot. Attitude. The attitude is, is deplorable. Mm -hmm. It's un, mm -hmm. it's just deplorable. Remember um, Amos, you're too young. Amos and Andy was the, the show that came on. Mm -hmm. Minstrel show. Every, well, not really, because it's interesting that we did not call Jackie Gleason's sh show where he was Ralph Cramden with his wife. Mm -hmm a minstrel show, mm. and those lines were the same. See, now, you asked me earlier, am I tired? I'm tired of white folks defining who we are, and I'm tired of black people accepting, accepting that without definition question. Without, question. Without, without question. Without question. How can you, yeah. how can you, yeah. because to talk, to stop David is to stop all black men, but we need to mm. understand that. What one black man does impacts on all black men, and when I was a child, you were told that. You were told you have to set an image because, because you represent. You stand in for everybody else. Yeah, you do. That's what we were yeah. told. I don't know what what you, it seems like. You say you know for all the progress and comments that we have made. It's a lot of digression. We, yeah, we, we, we have to, we have all these style issues. Well, you know we, why we have them yeah. because we never knew who we were and we don't know who we are. We were sitting with Earl and talking this morning at breakfast. And he says, you know, um, Jane Weldon Johnson's mother fell in love. Yeah. Say what? Mm -hmm. Who knew? Yeah. And then we started talking about Marcus the Garvey. movement and yeah. Marcus yeah. Garvey. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. we're connected. Yeah. The Empowerment Radio Network wants to make sure the connection. No, we're yeah. going to connect. Especially in the Caribbean. The yeah. Because I've been to, this is my first time in Nassau. I've been to Regents, Anguilla, mm -hmm. on yeah. the other islands and stuff. But the Caribbean people, they they are the most productive. They are the most, when you go to New York, most people that own businesses in New York, they're from the Caribbean. Okay. So the Caribbeans get it. It's not like we have to go and reteach being productive or reteach no, entrepreneurship no, no, to no, the no, Caribbean. No, no, they understand it. So the, the vibration that we get when we, when we touch down on these islands, it's a fight vibration. It's almost like when the slave ships came and they dropped these mm -hmm. particular type of Negroes off. These were the Negroes that was like, we're going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to be here. I don't want to be a slave. We're going to ri rise up and revolt. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, when the Negro got to the United States, they got a little bit more complacent. They got a, a little bit more yes sir, yes sir boss. You know what I'm saying? Whereas in the islands, there's more of a fight. There's more of a, of a, a, what, a gangster proclivity. But they've been impacted too. And there's pride. Because, but, yeah, pride. Well, pride. Now that's what we don't have yeah. in America. But they've been impacted too. This white man, largely English, took his message of division everywhere. Look what he did in India. He created a caste system. On Willie Lynch. He put he put uh, uh, by caste system. He put markings on people. Mm. Look what he did to the Native Americans. He cut that. Now, if you're a white person and you didn't have any descendants there, don't call me because I ain't talking about you. Right. But you got some of that in you. <laughs> you got some of that in you. Me. No, no, no. Oh. I mean, man, <laughs> like the white man that was sitting on the on the plane and slapped that little baby, you the little black that? baby. Come on now. Yeah. See now, yeah. that's when we need a nation of strong black men, because he should not be able to get away with that. That brother. I want you to know that I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. That brother. Disclaimer. <laughs> ought to show up. Yes, that's my disclaimer. I am a Christian. He slapped a black baby. Okay called the black baby's white mother a nigger lover, okay? Yeah. I think that there ought to be some people who get his attention and take him for a ride. <laughs> I don't mean kill him. I mean educate him. Miss Bev, what's your um, what website address? Because <laughs> I need music. I know we got to go to a break. Yeah. What, what's the website? Is it, is it the Bev Smith Show? Uh, yeah, the website is uh, thebevsmithshow.net. Uh, and you can get all the information on how to email, listen to past shows, get information, all of it. All right, and then also um, check out uh, Black Anomics on uh, Sirius XM Channel 128 on Saturdays in the morning, um, 6 Eastern to 9. Um, and you can catch us on that Twitter box at Blackonomics. That's B L A C K A N O M I C S at Blackonomics on the Twitter box. That's Twitter. We call it the Twitter box back home. And then also info at Blackonomics.com. And the Bev Smith Show, the you, Bev you Smith Show.net. And you can go in and you can hit the archive 
and hear the and hear the shows. Now we put our shows up mm -hmm. so people who could not hear us on a regular basis can get a chance. So and I you, think we should you do. have to hear the interview. Get the information. Get empowered. Mr. Gregory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, Mr. Dick Gregory, you still doing okay? Oh yeah. Oh, we were just with him two oh, yeah. weeks ago uh -huh. mm -hmm. at yeah. the progressive meeting. We just interviewed him last week. Yeah. Yes. That interview was yeah. off the chain. Yeah. yeah. He is a very dear, personal, supportive friend yeah. of mine. He and his wife, Lillian. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I'm with him a, a great deal. Okay. He is another one who will not stop no. until he dies. And you know, he has a thing with her because he's escaped death like 92 times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Listen, I got to go now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm so glad that you stopped Thank in, though. This has been a particular pleasure. Me. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had in studio this morning talk show host, international talk show host, Miss Bev Smith. I've had Brooke Titus, and I've had David Anderson, and it has been a pleasure. And they're also a part of the ERN, the Empowerment Network. And um, thank you so much for thank coming. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Debbie. We love you. Thank you for, uh, for owning a station, yeah. for a black woman owning a station. There's not too much of that going on in the United States anymore. None. So we want to thank, take None. my hat off to you. Yeah, yeah she's special. No. We do. Very special. We do think she's That's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm going to take a break right now, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll be right back with the final segment of Leading Voices.